you I know are tuning in for the first time tonight. Um, we are a show for Christians. This is a program that is designed to uplift the body. Um, evangelical, not so much. That, that's not to say that certainly if someone wanders in and wants to know, know more about the Lord, we certainly share with them. But this is a program designed to encourage and uplift the body. This is a place to get meat. This is a place to get strong in your faith and in the Word. And that's what we're here for. And it's okay to be excited about Jesus Christ. It's okay to be excited about your faith. Even though you live in a world that hates Jesus, hates you because you're part of Christ, doesn't matter. Be excited about the Lord, and no one's going to be upset with you. As a matter of fact, we're going to be encouraging you and encouraging each other to be excited about the Lord. Now, I just got a note from my uh, webmaster. Uh, I know Chris, he's excellent. He's an awesome guy. I know he's been working behind the scenes on some things, and I'm not sure of this email I just got from him um, as to whether or not uh, we've got a chat page up tonight or not. I know it's imminent, and Chris, if you can make it go, fire away, buddy. Uh, if you can get the uh, chat page up on that front page and make it work, um, do it. Just make it happen, brother, and uh, we'll uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, and fire me an email if, in fact, we are going with that. And I'm sorry I didn't uh, wasn't able to get back with you sooner. Again, if you've just stumbled on us, you're expecting Stan Dale. We expect him any moment now. Um, my background, a very successful, in relative terms, secular talk show host, always a Christian since 1983. Uh, higher ratings than Rush and Beck and all those folks in my corner of the world in Springfield, Missouri. Um, ran afoul of the uh, Republican Party uh, establishment because I, I felt that there were certain individuals that were very corrupt that passed themselves off as Christians that were anything but. And um, ended up doing an interview with Michael Steele that went viral and all kinds of fun things. So long and short of it is I lost my job uh, shortly before Christmas a year ago. The Lord moved me onto the Internet where I felt that's where losers and wannabes go. And uh, here I am. Uh, shortly after starting, we thought we were doing a sort of secular-style talk show. It ended up being a ministry. The Lord put in my heart that we are to be a catalyst for revival. The Lord put on my heart that a financial collapse is imminent. The Lord put on my heart to encourage you to fast and pray, to learn to hear God's voice. How often are you taught or told or encouraged to fast? If you don't know how to fast, we literally, if you go to our links tab on crossingtheworld.com, there is a how-to as far as how to fast. You can download it for free. No, you don't have to send me any money. Um, fast, pray, seek the Lord. Get to know his voice. All right. Uh, awaiting for, uh, waiting for, awaiting Stan's call, 877 995 3742. And or our um, Skype link is Jericho only. Jericho only. And Stan will be with us in just a couple of seconds, I believe. Um, what else can I tell you? I've told you that this is a place to be excited about Jesus. Um, we look at the world each night from 7 to 11 Central Time as a place um, or, or through uh, a, a Christian mindset. We put on our Christian glasses. We shouldn't have to, frankly. We should be looking through the, that sort of lens every day. The sad truth is that only 20% of those who go to so-called Christian churches actually do have a Christian worldview. Even sadder, uh, the report done by uh, Branna, the, uh, he's sort of the Christian version of Gallup. Um, he interviewed a bunch of pastors. Fifty percent of the pastors said that they have a Christian worldview. I suspect that a bunch of them were lying. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, how many, uh, how many Christians, uh, pastors even believe? I don't know. We do. We do. All righty. With no more fanfare, it is a pleasure to welcome to the program Stan Dale. Stan, God bless you, sir, and welcome. Good evening. How are you? Doing really well. Thank you, Stan. Um, I'm sorry I'm running late here. I just uh, got caught up in business and didn't let the time get away from me, but anyway. 
No. Good to be here. And uh, you are most welcome, sir. You are most welcome. Um, Stan, there's a lot of different people that you've been interviewed by, a lot of different um, sort of tact. I mean, I, I, I hear you with George and Uri. Um, I, I hear you with different folks. But it's, it's my hope that uh, tonight is going to be a night where we can just really focus on the Lord and, and really uplift and, and encourage people in their faith. Uh, so I, I'm going to start with not so much that you are uh, a prophet, but I, I look at you the way I would look at, say, a, a Gerald Salente and sort of the, the, uh, the trends report. Given your background, given your knowledge and understanding in science and so many different things, if, if you were to give us sort of a spiritual trends report, where would you say we in America and the world are right now relative to end times prophecy? Uh, well, I'd say, well, spiritually, the world is in trouble. Um, and we are, we are within 10 years, I think, of most of the, of the prophecies in the book of Daniel and the book of the Revelation of John being fulfilled. Um, I think we are just right at the door, just imminent. I look at what's happening in the Middle East right now, and it, it's almost like you can read the book of Revelation, read the headline in your paper, look at the book of Revelation, look at the paper. It's almost that close now, it seems. It is, it is. And uh, I, I find that more and more Christian folk and groups are uh, bringing us and emailing and talking about uh, the issues. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, um, uh, because a lot of the Christian churches have been asleep, but they are starting to form groups, um, uh, church groups or neighborhood groups or family groups, and are holding meetings and studying prophecy. And uh, some of them, I've got that quite a few of them, are buying Holly's book, The Dare to Prepare, which is uh, how you prepare yourself physically in the world for uh, several events that may occur. Um, but that are just normal events to catastrophic events, as prophesied in the Bible. And then my other book, The uh, Cosmic Conspiracy, is also going out the door at the moment because that's the spiritual preparation side of things. Don't know. Have you seen either one of those books? Well, actually, I have right at the very top of my page, and I'm glad you mentioned Holly's book because I think it's brilliant. Um, my whole raison d'etre is to make people aware that an economic collapse is coming, a time of great revival is coming, but that we need to prepare, much like uh, Joseph warned through, um, through the, the um, Pharaoh, seven years good, seven years bad. Agrippa warned the New Testament church, hey, there's a famine coming. I believe the Lord is using, you know, rinky-dink people like me and people like David Wilkerson and people like yourself, saying, hey, Christian, wake up. There's stuff coming. We need to prepare. And when I saw Holly's book, I was really excited, and I wasn't sure even if I was allowed to bring it up. So if you go ahead and spend a couple, I, I don't, I don't mind you well, being, I don't mind you being your wife salesman here. Spend, I don't mind you spending a couple well, of minutes explaining what the book is, so people know why to buy it. Well, okay, but um, bear in mind the reason I brought it up was because we have both sides of the preparation sure. issue: the physical preparation here on the earth, and the spiritual preparation, because we know that one way or another we're either going to be translated in the rapture or we're going to die. I mean, that's just we're born to die. Exactly. And so between now and that time, you've got to take care of your earthly needs and uh, your spiritual needs at the same time, because you don't know when you're going to, to pass on. So um, Holly's book deals with things like the, the five wise virgins uh, did. Uh, you fill your oil with lamp. You, you make uh, provisions of food, water, shelter, um, medicines, and things that you would need in a number of emergencies for your family, uh, which are just normal things like loss of job, a tornado, a hurricane, uh, um, collapse of the dollar, very, you know, various type things, uh, nuclear war. These are things that people can identify with as being very uh, near and present dangers in addition to the the threat of biblical prophecies in the book of the Revelation and in Daniel. So, uh, no matter whether you prepare for the smallest of these emergencies or the biggest, uh, you are getting prepared. And that's what Holly's put in that book, is to show you all kinds of things that you can prepare for and then how to prepare for them. And you choose what you want to do, but basically all of them have the same rudimentary preparation requirements. The Cosmic Conspiracy is a book that I first wrote in 1978 when I was in Australia and it uh, is basically a 
a the first 200 pages of it is a path that I've followed to salvation, showing my secular involvement in cover-up uh, programs to develop flying saucer technology and propulsion for our government or for Dr. Teller's group. And then uh, the conspiracy to cover up a lot of these things in the middle of the book. And then the third part is all about being saved and why, and what, why we're here, why, how the angelic conflict occurred. Um, and then the last parts of the book, the last 100 pages, are an index and also additions I put in there about uh, analyzing various resource depletions and threats of nuclear war and how they're going to line up with prophecy. And the last part of it, the last uh, section that I put in the book for the final edition was in 2010. And that showed eight verses only out of the book of Daniel that I retranslated in great depth and researched historically to find out about the coming UFO stroke alien deception to fool the earth into thinking that Jesus has arrived and that the the leader of the world is being um, supported by God, little g God, which is really Satan posing as God. So those are the two books, and and uh, they they are very important at this point in time, and growing more important every day. So. Um, I think if I covered everything you needed to hear about that. No, well, don't forget right. to go to standeo.com and buy the book. We've heard about them, but now oh, you got to well. go buy them. So go to Stan's website and uh, and buy the books and seriously do. And, I, you know, Stan, it really touched my heart. And I'm not somebody who's airy-fairy and, uh, oh, gosh, am I got some religious nutcase. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty real and pretty transparent. But it, it really did excite me. When I read the preamble to the to the new book, this is the last edition. There aren't going to be any more because the time of the Lord is coming. And that just really encouraged my heart. And I wanted to thank you, one brother to another, for having the courage to, to do that. So bless you and thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Well, you know how I was feeling when I wrote that, and Amen. that's why. Yeah. Um, only because— Oh, I might also add— yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. You're the guest. Uh uh, on our website there, there's a lot of stuff people can just download, you know, free. Uh, yes. Th things to plan food requirements for your family for a certain number of days, weeks, or years. Um, there's a, a whole sub-website there on preparation, and you can see a button to click there. that You can read, find out who has various products that you might want to, to buy to put in your home or you consume. It's all free. Uh, you know, and it, and the news that she puts up is free every day. She just scans news starting at 4.30 in the morning, goes to 10 in the morning, and she scans news all over the planet. She's got a whole kind of bevy of news sources over there she checks regularly and, and vets the ones that are uh, important to people mm -hmm. that are studying prophecy and aware that we're in the end times. And you'll just see all that kind of information every day. She throws it up there and... Uh, you know, of course, the, the radio shows or TV or Skype that I do that we can publish, we put up on the website as well. Sure. That's all. I'm just going to tell you there's a heap more there that, oh. you know, people can have for free. Well, I'm glad you did because, um, you know, having been pretty successful uh, as a secular talk show host, Mark Levin once said of me, I, I'm, you're the best talk show host nobody's heard of yet, and they still haven't. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, obviously Drudge is a, a must-read for anybody doing a secular talk show. And I had oftentimes lamented, gosh, I wish there was a great Christian w uh, website like Drudge, except for Christian headlines. And then I found Arkhaven and went, uh, hey, this is, uh, or not, um, sorry, Millennium Arc. I, I had a guest last Friday, was Arkhaven. Um, <laughs> but uh, found Millennium Arc and went, oh, Lord, thank you, because it is just, I, I do, unabashedly, I use your website as part of my show prep every day. i I, I got to fill four hours, so y your site helps me immensely, so thank you, and thank you to Holly. Um, I want to uh, ask you this. I want to ask you this question, just because you know more about the guy than I do, and I'm fast. I know enough about Nikola Tesla to be dangerous. Um, was he nuts? Was he dangerous? Was he an occult master, or was he a genius, or all of the above? Well, he was a genius. Uh, Tesla's work it was 100, 150 years ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. Really incredible work. He was eccentric, there's no doubt about that, because he focused only on his work, and that occurred uh, after he had a, oh, some kind of an encephalitis, we think, when he was about 11, when he lived in uh, Serbia, mm -hmm. and, you know, with the, at home with yep. his parents, and he nearly died. And uh, after that, he could see things when you would say, like, frog or, you know, uh, 
horse, he would see it in the air in front of him. He'd see an image of a frog or a horse in the air in front of him. He could reach out with his hand and, and outline it uh, right there in front of him. Now, that, that ability never left him, and it uh, got refined when he was in uh, the university there um, in Europe years later, and he was able to develop some of his best work. In fact, most all of his um, electrical devices were developed in the air in front of him. He would see it and add to it in his mind, and it would appear there as a completed device. And in, then he would turn around to his engineering staff and say, come here, I want to show you something I want you to build. And he would lay out this huge piece of um, drafting paper on his desk, and then he would write down in about the size of a postage stamp with a fine point pencil, he would draw the circuit and draw the bits and pieces and say, now this is this, this is that, and this is, I want you to go build this. And then he'd wad up the paper and throw it in the trash and go off to lunch. Well, of course, they would run over after he left the building, grab it out of the, the trash bucket and try to understand that little one inch square sure. of uh, drawing that he put on there. Now, he was eccentric, okay, but he was brilliant. He understood uh, harmonic motion and harmonic circuits uh, like no one else I have ever read. And I have virtually everything that you can get that was written about him for him or by him in my bookshelf here. And I've even had the great privilege of being allowed to go in and inspect his personal belongings and a bunch of letters, you know, like probably 10,000 pieces of, of, of literature. I couldn't read them all, but and 100,000 photos there in a locked up room in Belgrade at the uh, museum. So they let me go in there and lock me in for a couple hours by myself and let me just wander, read, and, and touch and see, which was, you know, quite a moving experience because I do hold his work in high esteem. I don't think he was a cultist. I, I don't know, you know, exactly how he, he related to the Lord. Um, his mother was a good woman, um, and I think she was Christian. But, um, you know, who knows? Um well, the Most reason, of the work he did was just, just technological. Yeah. The reason why I asked that question, Stan, is, and I haven't had a chance to research it, but I had somebody, I think it was over the weekend, say that Tesla would get these visions and talk about some sort of spirit guide that he had, and that that made me, huh, okay, what what the heck was going on here? But um, and So that, that was the, the, the catalyst for that question. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I won't... Uh say it's impossible but sure. I, I've never heard that uh, I do know he was personal friends with Walter and Leo Russell and visited their home um, from time to time right and and you might say that their philosophy is a bit different than most folks but um, again Leo Russell was quite um, quite advanced in his understanding of how the universe worked as well so where they got it I don't know let's uh, we're talking with Stan Deo and uh, Stan is the consummate renaissance man that you can ask him anything and he probably knows the answer to it um wow well you know <laughs> okay yeah um and i'm not gonna I, I, was, I was thinking of being a real smart aleck and asking you something really stupid but i'm not going to do that but my um understanding of things and whether you believe in it or not that's okay because i'm not going to break fellowship with somebody i tend to be a little more charismatic not wacky like hin who i think is uh, of Satan, quite frankly, but um, I do believe... I've it, wondered that myself, yes. Uh, uh, but I do believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit, the gifts, and I, I have moved prophetically since about 83. The Lord put on my heart that we are definitely moving into a time of financial collapse. It's imminent. Beyond that, Corey Ten Boom, before she passed away, did give a prophecy that the last great move of God would start in northern Arkansas and or the Ozarks. The Lord put on my heart that this rinky-dink little internet uh, show is going to be a catalyst to that revival, and that the the whole purpose of this collapse is to get people's attention, because people do want hope and change. People are desperate for hope and change. They just didn't quite get what they thought they were getting, and I think we're going to have a window of opportunity, because when things go bad, people get afraid, and people start to look for answers, and I believe that's our moment and our opportunity to shine. That being said, that's what I think is happening based on your research and study as far as the economy. What do you see happening now, Stan, and in the near future? Well, a couple of things, Vince. I do agree with you that we are moving into a period where revival is imminent. We're seeing the results of it in the number of phone calls, invitations we're getting to speak, um, the sales we're getting of, of the uh, Christian literature that we have. 
um, all of these things are increasing, and we can tell that in the last month it's just absolutely started to skyrocket, which tells us that the Christian church is waking up, is realizing it's time to get their act together, and they're going out not only amongst themselves, but out into the unsaved world and their families and neighborhoods and talking to them in a manner with technology and with proof that is convincing the people about the, the offer, the gift of salvation that is there for them if they want to take it Amen. in these increasingly bad times. Now, the the collapse of the U.S. dollar is, you know, I don't have to be an economic expert to tell you, it is underway already. Food costs are going through the roof, and they have got they have not reached the top that they're going to yet. They're going to keep right on rising. Yes. And another good reason for people to start stocking food at the price they can afford it now, buying whole cases of canned foods or um, freeze-dried foods and things like this and putting them aside now because you're not going to be able to get them and you, and at any price, but certainly those things that you can get will be way too expensive. Uh, you can start a garden. We're, we're telling people, do that at home. Holly's got a, an, an e-book online. It's the cheapest way we could do it. It's a $12 e-book, and it tells you how to make your own four foot by four foot garden, how to mix the soil from various composts and things, everything you need. And that, it, we use that around here. Right now, she's ordering seeds for us, yep. and we're putting long shelf life seeds in storage here. And we've got the little foil packs and all that yep. kind of stuff in a cool area where we store the food and the seeds. This is a very important. There's. Um, there's a very limited number of resources for non-hybrid seeds. It's getting smaller every yeah. day. Yes. Um, now, in in the in the book that Holly uh, that ebook, the Garden Gold, it lists over 200 and some odd uh, sources to get those non-hybrid seeds, which is ones that haven't been genetically engineered, uh, so that they can't have offspring. You know, that's the same as the plant you you first uh, got from it. Monsanto. Uh, yeah. 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 It, uh, she does address that that yeah. issue. Um, so yes, the economic collapse is underway. The U.S. dollar will fall. There are just too many attacks on it. Overspending, um, non produce non production in the United States. Really, we're not making anything of great impact on the world that we're exporting. We mainly become a consumer society. And when you're not making anything, then your house is going to be in trouble, and uh, your economy is going to be in trouble. This is now coming home to roost. The uh, if the Chinese get their way and the petroleum of the world is now priced not in U.S. dollars but in some new currency, whether it be the yuan or something else, yeah, if that yuan. happens, faith in the U.S. dollar will immediately drop, yeah. and gold and silver will rise. In fact, they're already starting to rise now again. But uh, that's a that's a dead giveaway that something's wrong with the U.S. dollar. People getting out of the dollar, out of the share market, into gold and silver coins. So yeah, it, it's it's upon us. It, it's starting now. It's it's interesting because uh, honestly, Stan, I had never really heard of you uh, until a couple of weeks ago, and obviously you'd never heard of me. Uh, but I've done a lot. Of, <laughs> I've done a lot of research uh, before this interview, and it amazes me how God is saying the same thing to different people who who've never met. But everything you've said, you can go back look at our podcast for the last year, and it's amazing how simpatico you and I are, and others, that we're all saying the same thing. We have a person on every Wednesday night that teaches how to garden. Um, it, w one of the things that we've been encouraging people is either grow a garden or get out onto the land and or stock up. We also have somebody who's on weekly to teach you how to coupon. And this lady's brilliant. I mean, hundreds of dollars worth of merchandise you can get using coupons. And if you do it right, Excellent. it costs you next to nothing. So uh, it... it uh, it seems we're on the same page. We've got a break in a couple of minutes, but before we uh, we break, I want to uh, let our audience know on the other side of the break, we're going to get into everything from hollow earth to UFOs to all the good Christian x file stuff that you know and love Stan for, and we're going to get into all of that, I promise. But just before we, we break, Stan, let me ask you a deep philosophical question. Why do you think so many people have turned away from the 20th, 21st century church? What do you think happened? The church leaders, the many of the uh, ministers, have been trained by theological schools that were uh, kind of gradually taken over by people who had a different agenda than what the Bible did. They w went more to a social gospel. So when you're 
your shepherds that you trust uh, to teach you from the Bible are not properly trained and are, are more mm, more aimed at being um, comfortable pew uh, preachers, then the whole church starts to fall apart because it's not getting the gospel. It's not getting the meat. It's not even getting the milk in some yeah. cases. So this is why I think that we've fallen so far behind in the American churches. Um, that plus, you know, the the great wealth of uh, diversions and uh, television, DVDs, uh, electronic games, uh, travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all this is about to do. In fact, it's starting the about phase right now because gas is getting too expensive, life is getting too expensive, people are losing their jobs and they are very unhappy with the government just throwing our money away that they still have to pay taxes on, which are increasing as well. Yes. So this is going to make a lot of the church turn around and say, whoa, um, hey, maybe it's time to get back in and kind of be sure that we're doing the right thing. And what we're seeing is a grassroots return to that rather yes. than the than the uh, the preachers, you know, that, that are formally trained. We're seeing home meeting groups just springing up everywhere. I thoroughly believe the Holy Spirit is moving now and is, is infilling the church and is going to give protection, power, and provision that we have never seen the likes of before since the time of the apostles. Uh, it's Amen. coming. It's, it's starting. I love it. Preach on, brother. All right. Uh, I'm going to let you just put your feet up for about a minute and a half, Stan, and relax, and uh, we'll be back with Stan in just a second. We're headed up for a break. I uh, want to remind you, we're here every night from 7 to 11 Central Time, and we preach meat every night. We may get into the so-called Christian X-Files. We may just really tear apart a piece of Scripture. We may look at what's going on in the world from a Christian perspective and worldview. We don't shy away from anything, and we come at it unabashedly from a Christian standpoint. It's meat, not milk. And I pray that you'll consider maybe coming back and uh, checking us out a little bit further. We'll have one more half hour with Stan. He has been most gracious, and I'm excited to talk to him about a lot of things this next half hour. If you have questions, our email is vdj. My name's Vincent David Jericho, vdj at crossing-the-world.com. So vdj at crossingtheworld.com. Don't forget those little hyphens. I'll do my best. I won't promise. I'll do my best to ask questions on your behalf as well. All right, quick break. It is 30 minutes after the hour. You are crossing the world, and thank you very much for crossing.